So the day started off really good. I was planning to get out there and do my last garden tour. Wow, I can't believe where the year has gone, but it's been a great year. And so in the morning, like I always do, I put out my hummingbird feeders as the hummingbirds are waiting for me. Sometimes I do like a little enjoyment, but I rarely do this. And then getting ready to start in the front yard, there was a small leak. So Gary was checking it and I came down. And I thought, well, I'll get a shot of that. Look at that water. Not a good sign when there is no faucet there. And, yep, it scared me. It shot out almost in my face. Oh, well, not what we planned today. <laughs> Hi, it is Robbie from Southern California. And this is the last garden tour. Oh, it sounds so sad, but it's not. We're in the holiday season. Let's enjoy the holiday. If you're cold, if you've got snow, sit by the fire or sit by the TV, drink some hot cocoa and think about how you want to do your gardening. Or maybe you're waiting for the hummingbirds to come back. But either way, it will be here before we know it. Yes, it is the last garden tour, but it is the last garden tour for 2023. So I'm going to do this one a little different because like so many of you, I'm not really planting anything new, though I am moving things around and I have exciting stuff coming for 2024. I think I've got things coming that for you guys that said you can't garden, you will be gardening and you will be gardening on the cheap as well as maybe ways to keep critters out. We're going to talk more about that. The chair garden though, as you can see, is doing fantastic. I still have tomatoes growing. I have red vein sorrel, even some strawberry plants tucked underneath, celery, garlic chives. There's squash trying to grow, but we're just too cold at night. Though we've been 70 degrees during the day, at night we drop down to the 40s. And that is too cold for any of your squash. So I'm letting it do its thing but really come spring, when I get serious, I'll be pulling all that out. Now the brassicas, they love it. So that you don't have to worry about. They love the cold weather, they're doing fantastic. And the reason here in Southern California, I don't have to plan anything new, is everything that has been growing for me, that's got an established root system, that is perfect. And what's going on is they're gonna to continue to grow all winter unless we get into the 30s and then we may lose a couple things. All in all back here, the turmeric is doing great, as I'll show you. The chair garden is doing fabulous. I'm really happy with it. It has been here for years. Not one chair is broke. The totes, a couple of them are showing a little bit of age, but they're still going. I'm gonna be planting in them again. It's what, three years now, doing great. The wall, I will definitely wait on that. That is the warmest part of this part of the yard. It gets some, it, it gets in the summer. Oh, I see dragonflies. In the summer, it gets full sun and the squash love it. So right now I've put some peppers there because they were in here and they were struggling due to the cold breeze coming up the canyon. So I've moved it. It was all gone. I mean, all the leaves came off and I thought, oh no, it's making a big comeback. And then the ponds, I haven't done much with the bathtub or the two ponds because we've had a raccoon issue. I could take care of that and kind of wire and fence around, but for now I'm gonna leave it. The only thing that the raccoons do here, they have never bothered to tote, they've never chewed anything up, they've never tipped anything over, is they come in at night to take a bath. They swim, I've got them on video, I've seen it. I don't even wanna look at it anymore. They dive in, they swim around, they take their big bath and then they leave. So maybe later on I'll do something with that. The pomegranates, we haven't been able to use them as quick as they, we had them. So we have lost some, they started to go bad, but we have eaten a lot. Let's kind of walk around, but I am gonna keep the mystery garden at bay for another day. And let me explain why, maybe in another place. Let's go look at something else and I'll explain why that I'm going to keep as a mystery until the new year. I've got a couple new tricks under my sleeve that I think you guys are going to love because I've tested it all year and it's fantastic. Let's go take another walk in another area and I'll explain more on that.
Now here, I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing. I'm gonna get a lot of cucumbers. Oh my gosh, I should have done more. I still have cucumbers growing and we're still eating cucumbers. Some of the big ones got a little bit bitter. I just took the seeds out with a spoon and then cut them up and they were really good. A little vinegar, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little tiny dash of sugar and tossed with some peppers from the garden. It was so good, we're still eating it. I'm gonna go through these and well, now with my auger, it's gonna make life 100 times easier. I don't even have to pull things out. I'll show you how to do that. I've got some videos on the auger, but there'll be a lot more coming and also the irrigation tubing I use. You're gonna see a lot of that showing up. Now, right behind you is the mystery setup. I'll tell you what happened. I bought this last year and I was gonna show some of you that said you've got all kinds of issues you know, like raccoons or rats or squirrels and or dogs in your yard that knock things over. I think this is going to be really big and I'm in the process of setting it up. Now, why won't I show you right now? It's not a secret, but the thing is, let me, I don't know how to explain this where I, you know what, let's just say it and I'll tell you what happened. There was something else that I do in my garden that I periodically, you'll walk over, you may see it, you know, I'll walk by it and I'll talk about it briefly. And I think the way to call it is you've got YouTube pirates. You know, the people that come on that say you could grow roses by cutting off the rose petals and sticking them in soil and all, that's all nonsense. So keep that in mind, if something looks like so amazingly wonderful, it's usually nonsense. And there's a lot of that out there. Well, somebody saw the setup I was doing. There's been a few of them, actually. And what they did was they took the setup and it was simple, it's free, it's a free setup. And they put it in their garden and they did a whole video on it, same exact profile I had in my bird garden. And they did a whole video on it, but it was wrong. I never put the video together, I was in the middle of doing it. And he put it up completely wrong. It will never work. Now, in the past, I, I used to get upset about things like that, thinking, oh my gosh, people are, what are they doing? Why are they taking this and showing people the wrong way? It won't work. And if I ever made a comment, I got backlash. In other words, everybody didn't understand. And once in a while, you get, you know, the person that put it up would get upset. So I found out now, just let them do what they want to do. So what I ended up doing is scrapping it. Maybe I'll show it this year and I'll get into it. But by him putting it up there, I knew it was never going to work. And I knew his setup with all the plants growing around it was not true. The thing is, he's so big that I didn't want to say anything to him, nor did I want to put him down. So I said nothing. But what ended up happening is other people came in who tried it and said, this doesn't work. And then somebody else who was a scientist came in and it's funny because he came in and said, what you've done is virtually impossible, doesn't make any sense. And he explained to him why it's not working. And of course the person didn't care because all they cared about is getting the clicks. And so it just added more to his feedback, so or his comments. So the best thing for me at that time was to back down because if I would have put my video up, they would have thought I copied him when I had been doing this for years and then I tweaked it. But he, if he would have waited, he, I would have, I was getting ready to put the video up showing exactly how you do this setup and how this can help you with watering your plants, but then it would have looked kind of odd. So my opinion could be totally wrong. I decided to wait on that and I did not put it up. So that's why the setup I'm doing now, I think is going to be phenomenal. And of course, being that it's new for me, it's kind of like a demonstration because I don't really need it but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I decided to go ahead and do it. And I wanna put it up where you see me setting it up. Actually, Gary set this up for me, but I could have done it. And I wanted him to do it, it's good. And then I'm gonna put plants in there. You're gonna have a garden in a situation that is no more than about four foot by eight foot. That's all you need. And you can design it for your yard your deck, your balcony, anywhere in the middle of the forest. You maybe won't be able to keep bears out of it. Yeah, you might be able to actually. 
I just thought of how you can keep bears out of it. So yes, you will be able to keep bears out of it. You'll be able to keep everything out of it and be able to grow all your essentials for your kitchen. So that will be coming probably within the next few weeks because I am so anxious. You would think anxious. I bought this last year and never got to it, but now they've got them on sale so cheap compared to what I paid last year. I want to get it out as quick as possible. So this is going to be a new setup and I'm not changing any of my setups as far as, as you notice, my setups continue to grow. It's crazy. I need help. I need somebody to come in and help. Um, I, I end up adding on setups, but I like them so much, I add more. So I always come back with results, whether they're good or bad. You know, I've done the cardboard boxes. To me, yes, you could do it, but it's a failure. It brings in earwigs and roly polies and all kinds of insects and snails and slugs that you don't want. Wow, that's loud. That's a helicopter, I guess. So anyways, to me, I'm not going to waste my time with cardboard. Oh, I might throw it for fun run, once in a while. I did grocery bags and my tomatoes are still growing in there, but they're so tight that they stayed small and the tomatoes stayed small. Just other little different types of setups to do, you know, just to try things. But this, I think, I think this is a winner because I think it's going to help so many people. Like I may set it up one way and 50 of you may come in and say, oh wow, but I'm gonna do it this way, or I'm gonna do it that way, or I'm gonna do this or that. There's so many ways to set this up that I think you're gonna go wild about it. So we'll do that early on. But as you can see, I'm not gonna redo anything right now because next week they're talking about rain all week and that means their weather could drop down into the 30s. We'll have to see, maybe not, but either way, I have got, got plenty of greens. I've been making stir fry in an amazing way that I've never made before. Oh, there's something else I should show you. I experimented with something the other day and I didn't say anything to Gary and he sat down and started eating. He goes, oh my gosh, what'd you do to this? This time I made sure I remembered how to, I did it because I, I just throw, go in there and throw things and cook. And I said, I've never done this before in my whole life of cooking. And I've been cooking since I was 17 years old on my own. It was like, what? I said, it was something I thought of. I don't, I'm sure somebody else may be doing it somewhere, but I've never seen it. I wanted to try it. And now we've been having it almost every night because he loves it. So maybe I'll get into that too. Let's go take a look a little further down. Like I said, this is a different garden tour being it's the last one of the year. And I'm not sad. I'm happy. I'm enjoying the holiday season and I'm thinking of spring as I forage through what's left. And I'm growing on my windowsill, which is really fun. We should talk about that too. This has been funny this year. And you know, I've talked about all this. I really didn't plant much out here and yet it is just taken off like mad. This is all gonna be composted. So stuff like that I pick and I throw into a tote and just let it decompose down until I go to plant later. This is lettuce. Lettuce loves it here. I've got beautiful lettuce here. I've got lettuce all through here. This one I'm gonna let it bolt so we'll have the goldfinches coming in to eat on it or anybody else, any of the birds that want to. And I'm gonna grab the rest of the lettuce and grow that. And then all through here, I'll decide later because I'm so excited with all the new stuff I'm doing. I still have my original oregano. This is my original, it came off the deck and now it's here. And then you've got all the popolo that is finally, jeez. Hold on, I don't know what that is. I don't know that was really low and big all right so let's get back to this sorry for the interruption of some sort of helicopters flying around the popolo is growing all along here came up in the rocks and we talked about that the leaves from above are falling building up under the rocks because what happens the rocks stay on the top the leaves fall there they break down you water the plants it drips down and all the leaves are breaking down and turning into soil we don't see the soil but the seeds that fall down there. I've got mustard growing down there. I've got popolo that has gone to seed, which means I'll have more next year. And that's what's going on here, which has been really a good life lesson. There's no mulch or anything down here by me. This is all put by nature, the leaves. So this is something that we have to remember. We can do our soil for free, at least most of it if we want, by collecting all this matter. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it's if it was a plant, 
it's going to break down. Even if it was a toxic plant, that breaks down. That once it leaves the plant, it turns into what I call soil. A lot of you want to call it mulch. The correct thing is mulch. But that's what's happening. And all this falls, it builds up, though we don't see it, the seeds go down there, find the nutritious part of the soil, and if they fall in the right place, a little bit of water, they grow. So that's what's going on here. So I'm going to probably do a lot of lettuce here. It's going to get sunnier as we go into spring right now. We're winter, but the sun's going to go up and across. So I may have to either move them to the other side or create some shade. And I have lettuce all year. I have it winter, spring, fall, summer, all, all year I grow lettuce. And that's by me moving it in another location because microclimates change. So we have to remember that. Just because you come over here and say, I've got sun, I can grow squash here. I can, microclimates change. They change due to your house. They change due to walls. They change with plants. If you've got a tree and the tree is getting bigger, your microclimate will change. It will change, of course, due to the sun and due to the weather. If you have a lot of cold weather move in, your microclimate's gonna change. The sun comes out for another couple weeks, your microclimate has changed. So we have to remember that. And we're gonna talk a lot about that in the spring too. And that might, it might spark some ideas for you. Oh, let's go in the front yard. Well, now we're in the front yard and I'm not gonna do as much as I was gonna do in here, which is okay. I have been working in the front yard, but we have a problem. Just as I was starting the garden tour, Gary informed me that we have a broken pipe and it's broke there. So Gary has to remove all this blacktop and see what is going on. You can see all the water. He did shut it off in time. So let's take a walk through the garden. I'll tell you what is going on in the front yard here. I am starting to clear it, but I'm not going to plant anything until spring. I'm thinking zucchini. It will depend on how the sun is, but right now the sun is the lowest in the sky because we're in winter. And so as you can see, it doesn't get any sun here until afternoon. But in the meantime, I can grow flowers, walking onions, anything else in this beautiful puzzle raised bed that Gary built with the totes. And this has been going strong. So let me try to traipse through the mud and show you the front yard because I was going to skip it, but I'll just keep going. Now I have left a lot of these grasses because the birds eat the seeds off these grasses. So I'm letting them do their thing. There's a palm tree that came up. It is in a double pot. It cannot set root in the ground because if it does, I will be in big trouble by Gary because he does not want another palm tree that's 50 feet tall. So anyways, I thought it'd be fun to keep. So I kind of placed it there. Going around here, as you can see, I've got a lot of geraniums and I'm doing cuttings off the prettiest ones and spreading them around the garden. And then here I've got more geraniums, more walking onions. Look at this beautiful brassica. And boy, have I been using that for different things that stir fries and stuff. I'm starting to work on this tote, which is great. I'm taking all kinds of scraps from the garden and dumping it in there. And I think for now, I'm gonna plant flowers in there. I have zinnias growing everywhere. So that would look really pretty. And let's see what else. And then I've got here a toad up there with red vein sorrow, as well as some geraniums. Back there, I've got sweet potato and I'm gonna to have to get back there. I'll move my chair and do that later. Now I'm just starting on these black totes. And as you can see, I've got already soil in there. And instead of changing the soil up, as long as it drains good, I'm layering. And as you can see here, I have two beautiful brassicas, they're hybrids, and they're in pots with holes on the bottom so they can set their roots in these heavy duty black totes I picked up from the thrift store for a couple bucks. Got some walking onions there, same thing here. I'm gonna put another pot there with something and I'm gonna run pots along there with different brassicas for now. And I can change it up in the spring if I want, or I could let it do its thing. I think it's gonna be perfect because I use a lot of greens. Greens are fantastic. Up here, another one that needs a good trimming. I didn't get to that. And I've got celery up here. And that, ooh, that would be perfect. See how big celery gets? This is gorgeous. I've been using tons of celery. 
that might be a good thing to put on the bottom because very rarely do squirrels or rabbits eat my celery. It's just a taste that they're not fond of. And as long as they don't create a fondness for it, I'll be good. So I might place some more celery in here as well. Now these flat containers, they were on a bench I had here years ago and I just threw them down there until I kind of, well, decide where I want to put them. And I'm going to leave them right now. I've got walking onions. I've got a flat leaf parsley there. I've got red vein sorrel growing all through there. Of course, zinnia is coming up everywhere. So for now, I'm going to leave it and move it as needed. And then this is just a mint in a pot, which I've got mint everywhere. There's one of those stacked floral pots. And yeah, they're drooping because I haven't picked enough of them. I grow so much, but I leave them drooped. And then when I need them, I go back and get them. And then see, there's more of those flat pots. So I'm leaving that up there until I'm done with that. This is gonna be fabulous. We're gonna talk about this in the spring. I love this. So let's save this for the spring because this has been so great. And I've got all my lettuce growing. I've got bok choy growing. The cup is to hold the tool up so the bok choy can grow. I've got garlic growing, onions growing. Actually, that might be walking onions. And in here, I've got a carrot left in here. I'll have to get that out and redo those two. And this one is getting ready. No, nope. well, it looks like there's potting soil in here, but it probably came out of an old tote. But this has got a lot of compost, kitchen scraps and stuff. I'm going to layer that with probably something out of another container or pick some soil off the ground, the broken down wood chips. I don't know what I'll do. I could end up putting potting soil there. And then I'm going to plant something else. But that's the front yard. So let me get out of the way and try to hike through this muddy mess, at least where there's wood chips. It's not mud. That's one thing that's great about wood chips. But that's the front yard, and that's as much as we're really going to see. And there's Gary getting ready. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, the front yard looks nice. <laughs> it looks really green, doesn't it? A little bit of cleaning. I brought my wheelbarrow there, and I started cleaning. And now I'm piling stuff in there. And as I need it, I've got soil coming out of those pots that were sitting all over, all dumped in there. I didn't show that. We can walk over there one more time as he starts to work. And then I can shovel from here. See, I'm even throwing leaves in there. So I'm going to have living soil. And when I need it, I just come, and this is trash, come back and get it. Oh, you know what? I use these metal ones, and I should put that in my pocket. They never go bad. They may rust, but my goodness, they'll last for years. Or plastic clothespins, keep that in mind. They do break after about a year. So that's what I've been doing here and just collecting the pots. I had a whole bunch of pots there with soil. Just dumped them in there, dumping in old leaves and just kind of stirring it around and let it do its thing. And then here I piled some wood chips underneath my uh, finger lime and gave it a little bit of a trimming. It needs more of a trimming, but that's it. All right, I guess we should continue and let him do his thing. So now we're here with my ginger and my turmeric. You can see that it is dying back, which is a good thing because that means I'm getting really close to harvesting. Anything that is brown, anything that is yellow is done. It's not pulling in anything for the plant. And as you start to look through, you can see that there's really very little new growth. So very soon I will be coming through here and yanking it out. I've got one that's trying, but even so, this particular leaf, I don't know if you can see it in the middle. It's the last leaf and I don't see any new ones unwinding. So I'm gonna say probably within a month, I will be coming back here. All these leaves, see how golden they are? Is gold to me because this is all gonna go back into the pots to refeed the plant after I harvest everything. Now I've got a ginger back here that actually looks really green. I don't know if I can get it out to show you. Let me see if I can pull it out. Yeah. Now, this one looks really, really nice. Now, I'll tell you, there's another thing we can do with this. I can bring this in and put it in Gary's back room. And then this will continue to grow a little bit over winter until I can put it back out. Now, the only benefit to that would be it would continue to grow. And sometimes by leaving it in a pot for an extra year, you can get it to flower. Otherwise, you're kind of setting the plant back and all it's going to do is grow the rhizome bigger and it won't flower. Flowering isn't important, but it might be something fun and different to do. And being that this one looks so happy because it's snug up against everything else, so it's being sheltered from the cold at night, I might take this one and put this in Gary's 
garden and then I'll have plenty of I got ginger everywhere growing here I'll have plenty of ginger but it could I could do that for fun so there's a lot of things you can do you could rich bring them in and then harvest as you need I don't know how much is in here but I don't want to get all money right now but there's quite a bit in there so we'll see as the time goes on what I'm going to do with it but let's go into the bird garden now and as you can see from last you know month and even two weeks ago it is starting to do its thing but remember these leaves you want to use them in your garden again yeah but there's really no new growth See, that's the last leaf that came out i don't see anything else coming up in fact this tip died i could decide i might just do it for fun i'll label it and say robbie's Oh, there's one back there. It's already died out. I want to show you in here, there is ginger. I don't want to take it out with the shovel because I could break it to pieces, but see it's there. So it's all through here. I can feel it with the shovel. There's more here. And what the best thing to do on this when I'm ready, see that? The best thing to do because it's all through there is to tip this out and get it out that way and this way you get a nice clean big hunk you can wash it off and use it as needed right now i would just break it to pieces but it's ready it is ready to be harvested this one it's already died back but this one is doing really good so i might bring it in just for fun so the bird garden's doing the same old same old that you see and it's beautiful look at this i think we're pretty much done no 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 there is another dragon fruit back there oh just one right in front of me i didn't even see this and there's one here we were eating dragon fruit one and two at night and now it's slowing down of course but look how big and look how green it is i can do so many cuttings off of this this is a variety that has got no name that we know of and it's a red on the outside fruit but inside is white let me tell you something it's sweet this will be composted all of this if i'm smart I will get a couple limbs off of this because this got eaten by something and try to root a little bit. If not, I'll start fresh, but this is a yellow tomato, but all the tomato has died back. Chocolate mint all over the ground. Lemon verbena is slowly drying up and turning golden for fall and into winter. More chocolate mint there. I'm doing cuttings here. Look at this. This is nothing more than a cutting and the hummingbirds love this. I literally sit here. You can see my chair there and I sit here with the door open and they come and let me tell you something. Before I tell you something, I had to show you this. It's not just me that sits with the doors open and enjoying the birds. It's her too. Thank goodness she doesn't bother them. She may walk out there once in a while and she'll sometimes see Notch, our rabbit. And look at her. This is something she really gets great pleasure out of. And I thought you might get a kick out of it, but this was done this morning. <laughs> Look at her. And then you'll see the hummingbird plant. Look at that. Oh, you almost saw it. You'll see it in a second, because I was kind of moving the camera around. But you'll see how the hummingbird comes right to the door. And they love the cutting that I set up there. It was just a piece that broke off and I put it in the pot soil I dug up in the garden and just kept it watered and it grew into a beautiful plant. There it is. Easy to propagate. This is called the hummingbird's lunch. It's a kufia. What's funny is I could probably bring the plant in the house and the bird will come in. I don't want them in the house. They're super smart because I moved that plant the other day to do some work and that hummingbird looked all over the yard for that plant, kept coming back, circling and circling and screaming and then it found it. It was sitting over there. The bird feeders are doing great. I'm going to be building more bird feeders and this is the easiest way to do it. I can't really get in front because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing in here. The fountains are doing good. I've got fountains everywhere. This is the cutest thing out of a water bottle. This is nothing. All you need is a pump. Do you see this? This container was decoupaged by me. Boy, it's over six months old now. This is a yogurt container. This is a water bottle and I made a bubbler out of it. You should check out the video. And that's all it is. All day I have birds coming to that. This is a store-bought. Cost me $18. I got to get that going. Uh, maybe $16. I mean, there are so many. I made this cement back there that's running. That is a design I made with hummingbirds and flowers and stuff. So 
we could do a lot of fountains come spring. It's beautiful. There's a hamburger tray and the birds love it. The rock, of, co of course, back there. Absolutely one of the favorites. Nothing more than a bowl and some rocks. And they just are crazy about it. And then here, I want to get more things going. There's the irrigation tubing. Why do I keep putting things up? Because just stick it in the air. Because it's causing the hawks to divert around it. It's making them not be able to do a clean sweep. That's why I've got all these branches here and I keep adding branches and rose bushes winding around. Different things because it's harder for a hawk to come down and catch a bird while they're eating because they want to swoop out of the sky, go down, grab it and take off. But they don't want to do this. They can, but by the time they zip around, oh, birds are quick, they're gone. So I am just making different places for them to have to go around. So now, even if they came through here, they'd have to go around that. So I'm going to put a whole lot more through there. And if I put some bird feeders here, there will be more there. It's obstacles. You know how you do dog training and the dog's got to zip around and they've got to train to do that? Well, though they can train and they can do all the training they want, the hawks. Birds are quick. They'll see something coming, and by the time they know how to get out, because they're eating here all the time, they'll be long gone, and they'll be safe. So that's basically it in here. I'm going to change up a few things. You can see I've been working. I'm going to, keep, of course, keep my tree colors. I'm planting them everywhere. I used my auger in a video early on in the year, and now they're setting root. Some of them, once they get a good root, that's when they take off. Otherwise, they sit dormant. They don't die out, they stay green. See how they just sit? But as soon as they get a root system, look at that. They just take off. So I've got a few of them, one back there, another one back there, the one in the front. And I'm gonna get more of them in there because some of them are just sitting. There's, there's two sitting here, but they're still green. So over winter, as they just sit dormant, they're gonna grow a root system and that will be perfect. Then here, I've been doing potatoes, but I've got tomatoes that came up on their own. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at this. All through there. Let's see if you can see that. It came up on its own. It was like, I think I will just simply forfeit. Oh, something eat that. I'm going to forfeit the potatoes that were in there. Let them just compost in. Because if you don't pick them, or get them out of there, I should say, and if it's too wet, they can decompose in there and it becomes food for the plant. So I'm gonna leave this because this is an absolute gorgeous tomato plant. Same thing here, I had some potatoes in here and this plant is doing beautiful. It's some sort of hybrid. It looks like a dazzling blue kale, which I did have, but the leaves are a little bit bigger. So I'll leave, leave that. Even this one is a hybrid, look how gorgeous. So a lot of them I'm gonna leave, even if they had potatoes, but you saw me harvest. And then I've got lemon verbena back there. I've got more tree colored. I'm gonna clean all this up. I'm making pedestals here to put in more water features. And that's why this is good because there's gonna be a lot of places where the hawk can't get to. I mean, we can only do the best we can do because nature designed the hawks to eat. And unfortunately, they're not seed eaters or bug eaters. They're, well, they're meat eaters. So we just have to do the best we can. If they are gonna do their thing, Here's all I can say is do it somewhere else. So there's the garden there. I think I'm gonna move this too. I wanna to reset up this table a little bit better so I can work under here and continue to propagate what I'm doing. There's my culantro. Is that not beautiful? And that's a mushroom plant. And mushroom plants? Wow, so hard to find. I finally got a couple and now I'm growing them in my kitchen window now. And they love my kitchen window as an indoor plant. So that is the yard. And this one needs to be a good cleaning and, and a shaping. But this is my beautiful, beautiful purple kale. And I use this all the time in stir fry, drinks, salads. I just chop it up. Let's take one more walk into the rainbow garden. So the rainbow garden is still doing really good. I still have peppers growing. I still have my pizza garden with my basil still growing, rosemary, thyme. I've got a sage growing. So everything is going, going good in there. I've got more basil over there and tomatoes. A lot of milkweed is coming up. I have to get to that, dig it up because my neighbor wants some. So I'm gonna get some to my neighbors. I've got some Malabar spinach growing in here and a lot of geraniums because I propagate geraniums because they look nice 
and they're no work. They grow here like weeds. My purple kale is doing good. So in here, I think this is just needs a good cleaning because we're still working in the back room that's still, you know, getting some stuff done and tweaking a few things. And I'm just going to leave everything, but absolutely every two, three, four days I come through and I water all my totes. I don't have to worry about the stuff on the bottom. It drips down from the tote. That's the way the totes run into it. So it works really good. And then I've got some hummingbird lunch back here that I need to get in a pot too. So I'm really pleased with this. This is another one of my favorite gardens. Oh, I've got to collect my zinnia seeds. I've got thousands of zinnia seeds, which I'm going to collect and just sprinkle around. Kind of a surprise in the spring to see where they come up. My fig tree is fizzling out, though I still find a fig here and there, and I've been eating figs off of it. The new garden is going to be to my right, and I'm really hoping that once I get this set up and I get into a role of working on it, I can kind of think about, gee, I could do it this way or that way. Like even last night, now that we've got it set up, but it's empty, I thought of a new way of setting up the bottom. So I'm going to think about that more, experiment with it, see what works for me. And again, when I get to that, I think a lot of you, especially in the spring when you're thinking about gardening, are going to be able to look at it and think, I can use this. Now, of course, many of you won't, but we'll get into all the different methods of growing. I think it's so important that we all grow something for our health because the food in the store, a lot of it, is treated to the point where it has a long shelf life but low value as food source for vitamins and nutrients. You'll always get minerals. Can't get rid of minerals. That's permanent in the plants. But your vitamins, your enzymes that you need, everything coming from the plant, they may not have what we need. We eat those. It's impossible to not be able to go to the store for so many of us and pick up the few things that we really do need. But it's important to get plants that we grow into our food and into our bodies because as we eat those, we're adding back real good vitamins and real live nutrients like live soil. So we're going to talk a lot about that. But right now, enjoy the holiday season. Enjoy the cool weather. It's a break. That's what it was t intended to do. That's why we go through seasons, so we can take a break. And then in the spring, in the summer, we can think about how we wanna store some of our food, what way works for you. For me, freezing works. I have dried some, but I happen to really like freezing food. So I've got tomatoes and tomatillos and peppers and all kinds of stuff frozen, and I go back and pick that. But again, in my area, I can still oh, go through and pick so many different greens. And we've got so many things growing. I want fresh potatoes. I go and dump a bucket and get potatoes out. I'm still growing cucumbers. That's a surprise. And I even have some squash down there I found. Small ones, but perfect to still harvest. But they'll be gone in the next month or so. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this. I want you to to start thinking. I want to get your mind going. So when spring comes, you're already thinking about all the new things you want to do or experimenting to see what will work for you because we've got to talk about microclimates because microclimates change. Just like the sun goes by here, it changes every minute, every second on some places. Let's work with minutes and hours because that is so important for us to understand. And once you understand that, you will be able to grow your lettuce all year long. I don't care if it's 100 degrees. You will be able to, especially when you make things portable. And you know how I love making things portable. You know how I use dish pans. That has turned out to be really big for me. Totes, you set up the totes, you leave them. But when it comes to dish pans, you can pick them up and move them at a moment's notice. We'll get into that in the spring. Kick back, make some hot cocoa. I make it from scratch. Sit back, watch some movies on TV, Christmas movies. That's what I've been doing. I'm finding it on all different channels. And it really de-stresses me and brings me you know, down to earth and to enjoy the cold weather. Because I happen to not like the cold weather, though we're warm today. We've got a big change coming. And then once we hit that change, generally in around January, we stay that way sometimes well into March and April and May. And then it's like, oh no, I want to plant. Why is it so cold? So enjoy the cold weather. Enjoy the break. Rejuvenate. And watch us. We're not going anywhere. 
we could just chit chat if you want. Let me know if you want to chit chat. Put it in the comments. Say, look, you don't bore me when you sit there out in your garden, on your deck, in your kitchen with the hummingbirds. I love it. And if you love it, then I will come on more. Even cooking. Yes. If you want to see me cook and talk to myself, because it's hard to do cooking and talk to the camera, just let me know. So with that, have a watching. Ravens are all over the place. I'm, I'm just watching them as they're trying to talk. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. As it says on my shirt, don't forget to eat what you grow. Grow something. Bye-bye. Wow. I'm very fortunate to still have food growing. And plants that are still alive. Ooh, I see some tomatoes.